You are listening to episode 79 of the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. Today we're doing a time check. You are listening to the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. I'm your host, Master Certified Coach Lisa Schwaller. Each week on the podcast, we talk about how you can rise above the stress of modern living so that you can focus your energy on what matters most and have a lot more fun in the process. All right, let's get started. Hello, hello, come on in. Hurry, 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 or not. <laughs> Saunter in to our little conversation if you'd like to. I love talking about time. I coach a lot of people on their relationship with time. In fact, in my own personal life, probably the greatest gift that has come out of becoming a coach and working with thousands of people is I really have a very unique perspective on time, what it's for, how to use it, as, which is so funny. We never say, oh, I just really want to get really effective at my breathing management, right? We, we have oxygen that we breathe, um, we walk around, and we don't really think about managing those other resources of living like we try to manage this kind of made up construct called time. I mean, obviously, there are days and seasons, and we do see the progression of what we have labeled time in that way. But this modern relationship with time is very curious. So for you, do you consider that you have enough time? Do you like to hurry? Or do you tend to move a little bit more slowly? like actually even physically moving slowly or mentally. Chances are, if you're listening to the Less Stress, More Fun podcast, you're probably someone who is a hurrying sort of person. That is a challenging phrase to say, let me tell you. I, I uh, want to point out that in the show notes, there's a link to an article about the history of time management and the study of this idea of time management came to be in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So right around the time of the Industrial Revolution, when we were developing machines to increase the output for the benefit of the humans. And Frederick Winslow Taylor is normally considered to be the father of scientific management. Um, he wrote a book called The Principles of scientific management in 1911, that it was the launching pad for what we today now know as time management. I will tell you the story of specifically what activated the idea for this conversation, this episode, is I noticed that I would, I do a lot of counting. It's so it was so habitual to me that legitimately it was just something that didn't come to my attention. There was constantly this, this time counting. If my workout was 30 minutes, how much time was left? If my trip from Austin to Houston was three hours, was I at the halfway mark or at the halfway to the halfway mark? I was constantly slicing and dicing my life according to how much time until how much time remains. And I really got curious about this a few months ago, especially it actually was the workouts. I would be like, oh, when did I start? How much time do I have left? And I really jokingly and lovingly was like, why, why would that even matter? I, I have it on my calendar. I have enough time to start and finish in the time allotted. And this mental countdown is not only not making things go faster or more efficiently, it was also really deducting from the fun part of working out. It was actually adding this little layer of stress. How much time is left? That then opened my vision to how often this thinking, this habit of thinking of how much time until how much time remains, how much time do I have, how long will this take, how like pervasive and ubiquitous that pattern of thinking was in my life 
And I then wrote on my whiteboard, which is right in the middle of my living room, I wrote, stop counting. And I encouraged myself, please, Lisa, just stop. Stop counting. The counting is not making things better. I'm creating suffering for myself when I'm counting. And you know what? Over time, it actually, it worked. And I'll tell you something. It's made things more pleasant to just be in a task without the mental countdown. It's made things more pleasant not to be as obsessed with time and how much and how long and how much remains. Let's turn the focus on you. What are your time habits? Do you often check the time? Do you count how much time is left, kind of like I was doing with my workouts? Do you wear a watch? Do you have clocks around you? Do you use your phone as a clock? What is your relationship with time from a habit or behavior level? I even think it's interesting uh, that so many professions bill in chunk of hours because that's the payment incentive structure. So we all know that in a lot of instances, a lawyer who is working for a law firm will have billable hours. With some of the work that I do, there are timesheets that need to be completed at the end of the week to allocate work performed against certain projects. I even have a, a role where there is a lot of estimating as part of the role. And it's so interesting to even think about if one person bills 30 minutes and the other person bills an hour, what accounts for the difference? That work is not necessarily equivalent when delivered by different people. For one thing, they have to, they're not only performing the work, but are they good estimators of where their time has spent? In so many parts of our life, being able to estimate how much time is a really critical part of it. A lot of companies, they'll start an IT project to replace software and they'll be like, how long is this going to take? And it always seems so arbitrary as someone who's worked in IT for a long time. I remember thinking, this is just, it's just so made up. Like, are, are we good estimators? A lot of the science, a lot of the research says, no, we're terrible estimators. Humans are notoriously optimistic about how long something will take. We'll think, oh, this will only take 20 minutes. And then, you know, two hours later, we're looking up saying, what have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> and entire companies are in that same position. So there's the your habits of time on a behavioral level, on a social level. How are your time habits? What do they look like? Do you plan with people related to time? Uh, do you have opinions about other people's use of time? Of course we do. I would say this is actually something that I hear a lot is a lot of um, opinions about or judgments of people who use time differently than we do. And how do you talk about time? Do you have plenty of time? Do, is it about time? Do you never have enough of getting curious about your time habits in your language? Now, what do you think about how you use your time? Do you consider yourself an efficient person? Is it okay with you to be late? If so, how late is acceptable? Do you value being on time? So um, I'm, I'm laughing because my if my kids were in here, they would be nodding vigorously that they have learned the phrase, five minutes early is on time. Because I came from a group of people who really prized being on time as a demonstration of respect. And for me, being late is like, it's mortifying mortifying to be late. But what do you think? How do you use your time? Do you consider yourself efficient? Are you a fast worker? Are you productive? And then when you notice in your relationships, whether professionally or personally, what do you think about how others use their time? You know, like do phrases waste time mean something to you? as if time can be wasted it's it's just you're you're choosing what to do with time other people are choosing what to do with time 
can you really factually waste time? I mean, not factually, but most people know what this means for them. If I say, what does that even mean to you to waste time? Most people have a fairly robust story about time wasting. I uh, remember working in an organization where it was like everyone was busy and everything was always late and everything was always in a hurry. And I remember Riley observing one time, it's like, you know, we don't seem to ever have time to get it right in the first place, but boy, we sure seem to find the time to fix it after we broke it. It was so frustrating to me. You know, this idea of like rush, 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 and haste made waste. You know, the, the hastefulness caused people not to ask good questions, not to involve all the people who were part of the decision. And inevitably, the product would be insufficient. And then there would be the scramble to find the time to restore it and to get it right. So again, working in IT, working in software, um, you know, there's even books that have been written about the mythical man month. <laughs> I forget the name of the author, this idea that this distortion of time and this sense of being in a hurry, tick tock, tick tock, hurry, hurry. We've got to meet the deadline, but if it's garbage when you get to the deadline, you find the time to fix it most of the time. Is there a planning fallacy at work in your organization? Is there a planning fallacy at work in your family? Like, do you have a family culture of, of rushing and then having to take time to restore things? Or do you have a family system that's a little bit more ebb and flow, a little bit more a slower pace. What is your family culture around time and how time is used? That idea of the planning fallacy about people underestimating task completion, there's a link to an article about that in the show notes as well. And when you think of what you want to create, so now let's talk about using your time. Do you use time to control your behaviors? For example, do you have eating plans and you'll say, I will start this new food plan on Monday. I'm going to eat however I want this weekend and then I'm going to start the diet on Monday. Do you use time in that way or have you seen other people use it? What about with with working out, with vacations? Like, are there certain ways that you use time to boundary or even control those choices? Do you use time to set goals? I think this is this is something we've all heard of is the SMART goal, and it's time-bound. You know, this idea of when will you start, when will you finish, and how will you know you're done by that time? And then there's leisure time, your personal time, your free time. What priority does that take in your life? Does leisure time get the the preferred slots? I know a lot of people are like, what? Why would leisure time get the preferred time slots? I actually, um, in the Life Coach School, there's a, a, a course inside the Get Coach program called Monday Hour One. And I have taken this course and I work with clients who have taken this course and they talk in this program about planning your rest time first, planning your leisure time first. And this just causes people's brains to melt. It's so uncomfortable for people to think about planning their leisure time and giving it the priority spot and my work and my other commitments will work around it. It's such a mind puzzle for people to solve. Think about what you think you're accomplishing over the time span of, say, a year. So, for example, the, the New Year's resolutions are this idea that in a year time span, in that time period, you will make certain behaviors or changes or learn new things. And it's sort of arbitrary to pick a year time frame. When you think of your relationship with goals, 
do longer time frames or shorter time frames seem to bring out the best in you? It's such a fun thing to think about. And uh, I love to ask this question. It's such a fun uh, it's such a fun conversation starter for one thing, um, but it's actually a really valuable coaching tool is to ask yourself, if I was able to grant you an additional 24 hours a day, so you go from being a human who has 24 hours a day, which everybody has the same 24 hours a day, what if I could give you 48 hours every day? How would you use the extra time? I encourage you to answer that question for yourself. What would you do with an extra 24 hours a day? Not just to fill it out, not just to play the game, but to see what you currently feel are priorities or what you feel are lacks, things that you you wish you gave more time to but don't. It's such an interesting puzzle to play, the extra 24 hours a day game. So with that, I can't wait to see you next time. Thank you for listening. If you're enjoying the podcast, please rate and review wherever you listen. This will help other listeners find the show and bring less stress, more fun out into the world. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you next week.